Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back for some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So, in the previous episode we were clearing out a little bit of Elmshore to try and make way into Twin Helms, which is the next, you know, the city area quest hub where we're gonna meet a lot of new NPCs, get some quests, but I actually, I feel like playing a little bit in... Uh, fighting, I should say. I feel like fighting <laughs> in Pillars. So I want to have at least one more good fight before we proceed into the town. All right then. Because in the town we're probably just going to have a lot of dialogue, a lot of moving around, and I want to have some, some combat <laughs> before we head into that. So let me just clear that out of my system and then we can proceed. I will probably have one fight. And then we're gonna go. We still have a lot of our spells, so I'm just gonna pretty much engage in a fight, um, use up pretty much all that we have in terms of spells and stuff, and then we're probably just gonna move into Twin Helms and continue our quest there. Because I do remember there are some tough, um, some tough fights over there, uh, especially regarding druids. Ooh, I don't remember this little... Oh, okay, I remember. It's it's for a quest in the future, this area, I think. But yeah, I think there are some tough fights in this area. Which I, I can probably deal with right now, but... I'm going to try and avoid it for now, if I can. Just because things can get a little bit nasty with those enemy types. Let's see what we can find. Oh, is this a body? This is a body. Okay. Uh, put there. And the fine brigandine. Okay. What else do we have? We have a stone beetle. And now let's well. carefully scout. Just to make ugh. Yeah, there's other guns. There's oh god. There's earth blights. I think I can pull this section without uh, engaging that section over there. Okay, but this is other guns backed up by earth blights. And earth blights, let me just make sure of this. But I think that Earth Blights, yeah, they are not immune to piercing, which is our main source of damage. So I think we should be okay of course. dealing with this fight. Of course. We're going to have Mr. Eder go in and take the brunt of this. And then everybody's going to start nuking from the back, the usual okay. stuff. You should be playing with your pistol. Although the Earth Blights do like to blink around. Following your so let's just let's just send it there in first, see what the enemies do, and then we'll decide on how to proceed with the backline. Oh, she wants to stun people already. Okay, because this is the the lightning storm effect that stuns. Okay, she's doing something or other, and she's. I'm not sure if this is a domination attack, which would suck. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on vigorous defense. And try to start disabling them. You are simply going to start buffing your usual routine. We're going to get a painful interdiction over here. Okay. You are simply going to wait for now and you are going to wait for now. Yeah, okay. So they're already blinking on top of it there. She got stunned and blinded. Good job, Mr. Cordant. Let's start working on that one if we can. Okay, let's wait, you're buffing. Okay, let's buff with damage. P petrified already, really? Well, that's... That's not good. But I think he still has a lot of deflection, right? He still has 86 deflection, so he should be okay. Man, and he had vigorous defense on. 
<laughs> it's a graze, but it still lasts for 10 seconds and a half. Okay. Well, let's start blasting with the Grieving Mother so we can do something else afterwards. And I think Kana is gonna have to start tanking here. And yeah, just look at the damage he's taking. Just for being petrified, pretty much. Okay. Let's give you some pain block. Okay, and I think six point three seconds. The time it takes for me to cast this is probably not going to be worth it. Although it would make him immune to subsequent paralyzations, but I would have to cross this entire region, so no. I think I'm simply going to start nuking with an Iconic Projection to heal it there as well as damage people in the area. Aloth is now with us. Indeed. Okay, so let's start doing some nasty stuff with him. And I suppose we can toss in a Confusion over here. See what we can get. Okay, good. Let's toss in a Chill Fog as well. My rogue is still doing a wonderful job, just stun locking this bitch over here. Let's stun lock this one. He now has pain block, so he is better protected. And Durance, what are you gonna do, Durance? I think you're gonna give everybody Devotions of the Faithful for extra damage and accuracy. Okay. Okay, Chill Fog is out. And I think I'm gonna start blasting this lady over here with my friend or 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 better yet slicken so everything goes down and you can then start nuking freely okay holy radiance okay still petrified jesus christ okay how can i help him well you know what withdraw and you can toss in a silent scream on this guy. Ugh, please stay alive. It doesn't feel like he's petrified, he's moving around. But he is, so... Okay, Slicken went out, this guy died, that guy knocked prone for 2.5 seconds. These are confused, let's start working on this. Okay, and Durance can tank for a little bit, that's why we gave him the shield. Okay, Kana, that guy got killed, go over there. The Grieving Mother stunned this guy, wonderful. Shoot that one and clear these out. Okay, perfect. What are we doing with you? We're gonna get shields for the faithful to get some extra... Um, Deflection on our people here. Okay, good. My row killed the other Adragon. Let's work on the last one. And we are gonna keep on clearing out these Earth Blights over here. Now, since I'm going all out on this, I am simply going to cast a Champion's Boon <laughs> on myself. Yeah, baby. And then some damage reduction and then just start hitting things. Uh, Kana has been fighting for a while, so we're gonna get some extra ogres to help out. Good, yeah. A nice shot from the rogue, stun this bitch. Okay, Kana, fight. You two. Kill that. Back up. Okay. Wow, he's taking a lot of damage, actually. Let's get some Endurance over here. Help. Oh, there, she's still there. I didn't see her. Shoot her. Okay. Okay, you are back among us. So, Pillar of Faith. No, not really. Just extra defenses, why not? The other gun is gonna die very, very soon. She's getting nuked by everything. She's 
still managed to heal her friends, but it's not gonna do her very good. Okay, badly injured, near death, near death, so silent scream over here and the fight is done. Hello there! And one of the cool things about this, with it there, is the fact that... Sacre bleu! Is the fact that during the withdrawal, he was actually healing with his fighter passive. Quite cool. Okay. Uh, a little bit of a messy fight, but fights do tend to go this way when fighting druids, in my experience. But we got through it. Okay. We're gonna get some extra stuff here. Oh! Oh, boots of stability. What is this? And this is a fine warhammer. Oh, plus 30 defense against prone and plus 50 defense against push. It's actually quite good. So you have this, but your uh, chest armor does the same thing. She doesn't have any shoes, but this one isn't very important for her. I could give this to him. Since he is tanking more often than anybody else, and she can take these. Okay. Seems fine to me. Uh, I should give you this hatchet, since he's not using it. It's also fine. It's not much of a difference, honestly, but... It's it's better, so why not? Okay. Hey. So, I had another good fight in me. And now I'm just gonna leave. Because we are very low and I don't want to deal with... Because... I don't know why, man. But I have memories of this arch here. And when I have memories of certain fights, it usually means I got kind of wrecked by them in the past. So... I will be careful. We have gone this far in the run. I do not want to die. Okay, and now this should allow me to... Um, to reach Twin Elms. Yeah, okay. So, for those who didn't check that out in the last episode, I was trying to go to Twin Elms through here, and it doesn't work. This exit does not lead into Twin Elms. You have to go down here. So, to Art Song we go. A tree house? Cool. I'm very happy with the performance of my rogue in that fight. We got some experience by exploring a new area. Estramor, still! Tread carefully, Estramor. So he's calling us Estramor. I'm guessing that means like outsider or something. The warrior saunters over, a sneer of suspicion visible beneath streaks of paint. He glances at your gear before favoring you with a long look. Another fugitive from the burning city? The six tribes of Erglan Foth welcome you to Twin Helms. Before you lies the Heartsong district. You are free to explore it, but do not let your feet stray into the other districts. Those are forbidden through Estramorn. Oh, I, I, I want to... To ask about this word. Why is it forbidden to enter the remaining districts of Twin Helms? Twin Helms is a sacred city, built where the first keepers of the stone met the builders. It exists alongside the works of the builders, and it is the only place in all of Erlan Fath where it is permitted to set foot among these sacred places. The Estramorn, however, do not have proper respect for the stones here. His words trigger something in your memory. You see an image of a perfect cube of Hadra. Just as quickly, the image fades. A leader of one of the tribes could give you the permission of the city. Only Anna Ogad, Anna Menfath Bethel, is present in the passage of the six today, and she has her own troubles. He jerks his head to long hut in the middle of the district. You have other questions about Twin Helms? Sure. What can you tell me about Twin Helms? The city is sacred to all Glenfadens, as it is the place where our ancestors first encountered the Builders. That fated meeting turned our people from generations of wandering to a permanent home among the Builders' relics. When the Builders commanded us to settle here, they allowed us the unique privilege to live among their structures here. 
It is the only place in Erglan Foth where this is permitted. The Sacred City is divided into four districts. Hard Song, the Commons District, Old Song, the site of our temples, Elm's Reach, home of Delamgan and Druids, ugh, and the Burial Isle, which is the most sacred place in the city. Okay, well I'd like to hear about Art Song, which is the one we're already in. This is Art Song. It's a place where Glenfaddens and Estramorn may gather together. It is also the site of the Passage of the Six, where our tribal leaders, the Anamfada, meet. He points to a large round building at the other end of the district. That way is the market. Guard your purse there, no one bargains like a clan father, and if you need a place to stay, follow the fence to the east. There you will find the way to the celestial sapling. And we actually have a quest to take us there already, from the dying monk we, find befo we found before. Which temples lie in Old Song? There is Noonfrost, which is dedicated to Rimgard, or Rimgrand, uh, Rimgrand, oh god, it's so hard, Rimgrand. A group of pale elves from the frozen Southlands arrived not long ago to oversee it. There is also the Nest, a temple of Hylia, and Galloway's Maw, a den of beasts dedicated to the hunter god. The route to the burial isle also lies that way. Tell me about Helm's Reach. There lies Ter Evron, one of the only towers of the builder still in perfect condition. Two great helm trees twine around it. Even the mightiest works of the gods protect the works of the builders. Two Delamgan sisters dwell there now. The Hall of Warriors stands at the other end of the district. Rumor has it that Anamfath Simok of Three Tusks Telgar is there now. Helm's Reach is also where the druids keep their halls. There are the Ovates of the Golden Grove and the Ethic Knoll of Bloodsands. Many shudder at the brutal sacrifices of Ethic Knoll, but High Ovate Erona is just as powerful in her own way. We've, we've read about them in a book that they were kind of shunned for their activities. And I think they're mostly dwarves, from the lore we read. Do you know anything about the Burial Isle? It is the place where our Anamfada are laid to rest among stones placed by the builders. They say the souls of some of the Anamfada linger there still. The way lies through Old Song. It is the holiest place in all of Twin Helms. Okay, that's all I wanted to know about the city. Something else you wish to hear? Well, uh, who are the Builders? You know them as the Ingwithans. To us, they are the Builders, creators of the sacred places that we guard this day. I haven't heard of the Keepers of the Stone. The oldest of the six tribes. He points the tip of his sword at the long hut behind him. Up the stairs and into the passage of the six. This is where our Anamfata gather. Bethel, the Anamenfath of the gilded of the guided compass can tell you more. Okay, I'll keep your words in mind. Best that you keep your visit brief. Word has reached our ears that the riots have ended and the gates of Defiance Bay have opened once more. Aha! So now let me just check. Yeah, now we can once again go into um, Defiance Bay. And there was something I wanted to do in there. Uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned it in a previous video. I don't remember what it was. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to re uh, recheck the previous episode to remember what I wanted to do there. I think it was something in Brackenberry. Oh yeah, I remember. I wanted to see how how Domenel is. If they died, if they're still there. Because I wanted to loot the place. Tribesman, Antelope, Companion, and the Huntress. Children. Okay. A tribeswoman. So we're kind of just exploring this area of the city right now. It's the only place we can access. Oh. Lay in low. I shall take all of this. Yes. A bridge. The water is cool and crisp. Rinato. Merla, that Glenfaden witch sold me useless twigs and herbs. Does she take me for a fool? This will not stand. I have been swindled, and Nalarli will play for what she did. Okay. She'll pay, that witch. She'll... 
fuming with anger and pacing in tiny circles, the valiant merchant aims his wild rant at you as you approach. You there! Have you come here to trade with the savages? Learn from my example and take your business elsewhere. Spittle accents is every sentence. Liars! Cheats! Swindlers! That duplicitous bitch, Alarhi! She claimed to be selling Elard Golad flower buds, but all I have now is six bushels of common house plants. The herbs are useless. He throws a handful of dried plants to the ground, stomping on the brittle stems and leaves, kicking up pungent, savory scents. I'll get my money back from that swindling savage? Hmm. What is Elard Gola? Renato's rage abates for a moment, and his face twists into a nervous smile. Elard Gola is a plant that grows in the jungles of Erglan Foth. He clears his throat, lowering his voice. When dried and consumed or brewed into a tea, it's known to... Uh, known to... Uh, enhance one's drive for the better pleasures in life. I see. <laughs> you tested the remedy on yourself. Well, I... Renato fidgets in place, his hands smoothing the creases of his tunic. How can I sell a remedy I have not tested? Of course I tried the herb. Imagine what would have happened if I peddled this pale imitation. Renato clears his throat. His voice grows quiet. The herb did not have its intended effect. The only thing it made hard was... <laughs> was not vomiting. Ah, uh, wonderful. I love the writing in the game. Uh... And what did Alarhi say when you confronted her? Nothing of substance, he quickly mutters. She defended herself, of course, saying the herbs were legitimate. Why wouldn't she lie? No one will value my word over hers. He spits on the ground. Alarhi can lie with impunity when surrounded by her gangs of savage thugs. Okay, and what do you intend to do about this? When I get my hands on... Renato halts his sentence, his eyes darting about at the nearby grandfather and guards. I'm in the savage's own court, so it's my word against hers. Where does that leave me? I'd be a fool to threaten her here, on tribal soil. He sighs, pressing on his temples. I cannot sell this worthless herb to recover my coin, and I am powerless to confront a larhi. I don't suppose... He looks at you, sizing you up. If you were willing to mediate... Perhaps you could succeed where I have failed. I would, of course, pay you handsomely for your troubles. I will see what I can do. Oh, new task. Hard bargain. I met a rather enraged villain merchant by the name of Renato in Artsong. It appears he purchased a pricey sum of Elard Gola, an aphrodisiac plant gathered in the deep jungles of Erglan Fath. However, he is convinced that Alarhi, the grandfather herbalist, sold him worthless goods. Renato intends on recovering his investment by any means necessary. He told me that he was sold Elard Golan of poor quality by uh, Alarhi, a merchant in Artsong's market. I should speak with this grandfather woman and convince her to return the Valiant's copper. Okay, so that's our first task in the area. Oh, Celestial Sapling, that's where we want to go. But I want to see what this Rotu guy has to say. He's an ogre. You want up? I pull. Okay. Oh, it's like um, an elevator of sorts. Oh, I cannot steal from this. I mean, maybe I can. Let's see. What is it? Do -do 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 -do. Oh, maybe I can. Maybe I can. <gasps> oh, baby. Give me. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I guess since we're here, I'm gonna go to the Celestial Sapling and see if we can complete that quest we had. And I do believe the Celestial Sapling is an inn. And I also want to rest my characters because of our HP. And if by some unfortunate incident we get into a fight, I want to be healed to full. And I believe that the monks are over here, if memory serves. Yeah, baby. I still remember some stuff. The bed rocks with a gentle swaying of the tree. Oh, because this is a tree house. Yeah, this is very cool, man. I, I love wooden structures and tree houses. Good day to you. Good day to you, high monk. 
The monk massages his temples, his face buried in his palm. As you approach, he looks up. This room needs a proper door, he mutters. My brothers and I rented this space that we may have some measure of privacy in this foreign land. Perhaps you could find another room here in the inn. Who are you? Briefly opening his mouth to answer, the monk swallows his words. He looks you up and down, carefully choosing his response. My brothers and I were having a private discussion in a room we rented for our use. Please, there is a tavern full of people who will provide you with the banter you seek. What brings your order to this place? We travel where the teaching takes us. The monk mutters, his voice slow and measured. Not that it is in any, any of your business. Well, I met another monk in robes like your own. He died of his wounds right as I found him. The monk's eyes widen, his fists curl into a crackling barrage of popping joints. Robes like ours, you say? Was he carrying anything? Did he tell you anything? Hand you anything? Please, we've been waiting for another of our order to meet us here, and if you found him... All eyes fall to the floor as the monks begin to whisper chants in unison to their fallen friend. We could lie, but we will show him the message he gave us. He gave me this missive. Hand me that! The monk exclaims as he snatches the missive from your grasp. Almost immediately, his face turns red. I, I mean, please, this is of great importance. Breaking the seals, the monk unrolls the handwritten scroll contained within and quickly reads the message, his lips breathlessly mouthing the text. He turns to address his brothers. My brethren, the arch martyr has sent word. At long last, we now have what we need. We lost the sealed missive. Thank you, stranger, the monk says, folding his hands in front of him as he bows deeply. Your honest soul is to be applauded. I admit I was surprised when you handed me the message. I expected the seals to be broken. The monk turns red, his face smiling for the first time. I am glad to see common decency is not yet lost from this world. He reaches into the fold of his robes. Here, your honesty must be rewarded. Yes, we are benevolent, we are honest, good people. Thank you, good sir. And we gained an item, Isla Brachia. We also gained some experience. Quite a lot of experience for just talking to him. Well, and killing the wolves back there. Is this it? Isla Brachia, what is this? A unique small shield. Fine small shield. <laughs> Ranged grazes reflected back at attacker. Oh, I know what this is. Give me a second, I have to pause the video for a sec. Indeed, I went to check, but yeah, I was sure of it. This is something that Mr. Lars Anderson, one of the viewers, left in a comment saying that if I ever played with Pelagina, this would be a really cool shield to use um, in order to reflect stuff back at attackers, especially arrows. I've never actually played with Palagina that far in the game, or with this shield for that matter, but what he said sounded fun, so do keep that in mind if you guys find this shield and you are playing with Palagina. It, it might be a good pick for her. I will definitely try it out in a future run. This small shield is of lightweight construction, intended to be maneuvered in, uh, maneuvered in a swift and dynamic a fashion as its namesake. Despite the fine craftsmanship, it was most famously known as the weapon of a pit fighter, who used the shield and a distinctive dance-like fighting style to turn his opponent's attacks against them. Quite cool. And it does make sense, right? If you are playing with a character with very high deflection, for example, a dare, um, or, you know, a tank, and Pelagina can definitely be a tank, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be a graze against her. And honestly... Another thing that's important here, and that Mr. Lars also mentioned in his comment, this does not uh, specify uh, weapon attacks. It just says ranged grazes. So I'm guessing that even spells can get reflected back to attackers. This could be a fun science item. I'm going to keep it on it there. And I might mess around with it in the future, to be quite honest. So, 101 deflection to 93. Yeah, I mean, we lose a bit, but it's not that much. I could mess around with it. Okay, okay, cool. I'll have to see. So, a very cool reward. 
Ah, uh, I wanted to steal. God damn it. Okay, still. I'm very happy about this. And thank you for the suggestion about the shield, Mr. Lars Anderson. It's always appreciated. And man, I love this pub. Just look at the tree with the drinks. Yeah, I love it. Mr. Piggy is also very happy. Okay, and we have Elith. Oh god. Elitherion Haggard Shoes. Hello! Hello! Let me see if I can make his voice. A middle aged elven man stands behind the counter of the inn. He has a warm, open face and smiles pleasantly in greeting as you approach. Welcome, welcome! I am always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my friend. It seems to me you've walked a long road. All are welcome here, and those with interesting stories most welcome of all. Okay, who are you? My name is Elitherion. They call me Haggard Shoes for all the walking I used to do and all the boots I wore down. But those days are well behind me. My eyes have seen a great deal, and now my ears get their fill from the travelers who come through here. A fine way to spend one's day, to my thinking. I am always glad to see a new face. Take a seat where you like, my friend. It seems to me you've walked a long road. All are welcome... Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. Um. Oh, I forgot to see what the other guy had to sell. The, the guy that got swindled. Um, well, first, tell me about this place. Of course, Elytrian's face brightens. I founded the inn many years ago, but in many ways its tale begins much earlier. It was while I was returning from a long journey south that I first heard the story of the tree upon which this inn rests. Hundreds of years ago, a strange event occurred. The sky was troubled that night, with many stars falling across the sky, and one of those same stars began to plummet. Uh, what? began to plummet instead towards Eora. It fell here, striking a young tree and burying itself within it like a fiery heart. But the tree survived, and over the years it grew and grew and grew, twice as big as its fellows in half the time, until it reached the size you see now and grew no more. Hearing the tale, I knew I must find the truth, and you see it here. Uh, you see it there. He gestures toward the large stone at the center of the room. Uh, I cannot see it just yet. Around the tree's heart, I built this inn to welcome all travelers who might look upon it. Kind of looks over the stone. Oh, this stone. Okay, of course. Yeah, cool, a meteorite. Kind of looks over the stone and grins. A fine story. I'll carry that one home. I am always glad to see a new face. Oh, okay, so same thing as before. Um, can I see what you have for sale? Of course! We offer meals and some supplies. Have a look. Oh, Spirit Spiral. Plus 5% melee damage. Eh, 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 eh. These braces are made from a coil strip of bronze. Though tarnished and beaten almost beyond usefulness, they glow with a soft violet light. Of the many experiments of the ancient in Gwythen, some involved infusing equipment with soul essence. The hammered patterns of these bracers suggest that they were original pi originally pieces of animate armor, but among the fragments of essence swirling inside, you detect not only the focused energy of an animate, but also the essence of the elven cipher who created the bracers and tried to enhance them with a fragment of his own soul. Um, cool story, <laughs> underwhelming item in my opinion, so I'm just gonna leave it. Maybe it can be very good for like a, you know, uh, a very high damaging melee character, but I don't think it fits any of mine, so I'm just gonna not care about it. Move speed and might, sweet pie. Oh, do I have sweet pie? I'm gonna have to check. Coco, constitution, milk, endurance and constitution, sugar, <laughs> move speed. Uh, I do have camping supplies, so let me just check. Yeah, this is a sweet pie. Oh, and this is a savory pie, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I would like to... item type, okay. I have six eggs. I can buy some more. I wish he had ale, because ale is the best one, I think, for damage reduction. Hail, traveler. 
So I will take some more eggs. I will take some more meat and so I'll take everything pretty much. <clears throat> okay, cool. I'm just gonna store it over here. And we're also gonna rest. And we can get ooh. Plus two might, plus two con, plus two resolve. God damn. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> 200 copper, that's fine. Bright Hollow Courtyard Pool Construction Completed. I think that was the final building. I believe so. Oh, no, it wasn't. The dungeons. And that's it. Okay. Okay, so we have spoken with the monks. Are they gone now that I have rested? Nope. Okay. The unusual stone pulses with warmth. Okay, so this meteorite is still burning in a way. Do we have... No, this is a gold plate, so it doesn't matter. A Valian woman? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so many Orlans around here. Not like home. Must be why the tables are so low. Bitch. <laughs> I also love the tables, by the way. Very, very cool. Okay, what else we have? Oh, a named character. Have a moment, I would like a word with you. Welcome. Oh, it's a lady. A slender woman in dusty leathers locks eyes with you. It's good to see someone from more civilized lands around here. Her unkempt hair sprouts in wavy black tufts. Despite the fine features that sculpt her face, a cleft chin completes her boyish appearance. I'm learning firsthand the many shortcomings of Glenfathen hospitality. Her gloved hands come to rest on the pommel of a long estoc, cinched low on her hip. I can almost forgive the hostility towards outsiders, but the temperate taverns and these watered-down drinks... Inexcusable! I hope I don't seem too forward, but I need to help my friends and you look like the right person for the job. A sly smile carves a dimple on her cheek. Which is to say, you're not Glenfaden, Making you the closest thing I've got to an ally in this paranoid land. She gives you a coquettish... a coquettish? Sideways glance. And allies, well, they help each other, do they not? Okay, first of all, who are you? The woman pats the dust off her leggings and gives you an exaggerated curtsy. Where did I leave my ambassadorial manners? She flashes a mocking smile. I am Swineth. Pleasure to meet you. She lifts an eyebrow with a blushing smirk. For the time being, though, I'm just another Estramor minding her own business. Okay, and what help do you need? My friends have drawn some unwanted attention. Swinnet looks to both sides, scanning for uninvited listeners. Glenfaddon scouts, and not just any mob of local zealots, the Fangs. She pauses to let the name settle in the air. The Fangs are a brutal, uh, relentless bunch, eager to make an example of troublesome outsiders. As for why I need your help, her smile widens as she speaks, I need someone to warn the expedition that trouble is coming. And I need someone ready to fight, if it comes to that. She taps her hand on the pommel of her estoc. With any luck, we'll reach my friends before the fangs do. But if not, the fangs have a reputation to uphold, so this might require spilling blood. Oh, we'll reach my friends. Okay. Well, first of all, what did your friends do to draw the attention of the fangs? Just setting foot in Erglan Fath is a good way to offend the tribes. I don't know how they picked up our trail. I suspect one of our newer scouts didn't cover his tracks well enough. When I spotted the fangs, they were retracing a path the expedition had taken days before. Tell me more about your expedition, because this sounds fishy. I like to think we're on a mission of reclamation. Swinneth darts a shrewd smile. It is said that our armies left behind many valuables in their, nest, in their hasty retreat from Erglan Fath at the end of the War of Black Trees. So the way I see it, we're simply gathering up what our ancestors left behind. I doubt the Glenfathans agree with me on this, she adds with a dimpled grin. Yeah, I, bet they do. I bet they do. My expedition set out from Defiance Bay, heading directly east to cross into Glenfathan lands. I split off once we arrived at the Bale, the natural frontier between our nations. The plan was for me to keep my eyes on the Glenfathans while the main group scoured the target area. For days, we eluded them. 
she walks her fingers over the back of her leather glove, leaving a trail of it on its dusty surface. But the fangs got wise to our presence. Yeah, your friends are trespassing. By local custom, they're criminals. Swinnet frowns and blinks at you several times. You'll forgive me if I'm not sympathetic with face painters and their barbaric laws. I'm not pretending that what we're doing is noble. I just don't believe trespassing is a crime that warrants execution. Eh, well, kinda. And why aren't you with the rest of your friends? Why not warn them yourself? Her posture stiffens at the question. It was my turn to handle far patrol. I spotted the fangs on my track back to camp. I knew that rejoining the main group would risk leading the enemy right back to the expedition. I know the woods and I know how to stay quiet, but I didn't want to stake my friends' lives on my ability to sneak past expert hunters like the fangs. If they noticed me warning my friends, we'd have been overrun. Sweden tilts her hand to the side and points to you with a grin. But if they notice me and some reinforcements like, say, you, well, at least then we can scare them off or put up a good fight. Okay. I'll help you warn the expedition, lady. Swinnet smiles and with an overt display of dimples. Excellent! I knew I could count on you. She leans in and whispers. Assuming the fangs didn't already get them, my friends should now be at or around the Pilgrim's Trail in the North Weld. The plan was to camp along a trail leading to a temple of Ilea. Find my comrades, warn them the fangs are coming and help them clear out the forest. I'll head out first on my own to see if I can't lead the fangs astray and buy us some time. She pulls her estoc a few inches out of his scabbard and cracks a smile. If the gods smile on us, we won't have to draw steel. Should it come to that, I'm glad you are on our side. Well, I'm still not sure if I'm on your side, but... We'll see. So we got the At the Mercy of the Tribes quest. Sweeneth, a dear wooden scout, has come to Twin Elms to find help for her friends, who are on who are on an expedition to recover lost artifacts. Though the group hasn't been directly confronted by the Clan Fadens yet, Swinnet was on patrol and discovered that local sentries have already caught scent of our expedition. Swinnet asked me to warn her mercenary companions about the impending danger while she attempts to thwart the scouting efforts of the pursuing Clan Fadens. Swinnet and the wooden scout I met at the Celestial Sapling in Twin Elms asked me to warn her expedition of an ambush. I am to find the expedition at the Northweld by the side of the path leading to Ilya's temple. Okay. So that's another quest. And we have some people... Oh, 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 oh. This is not a gold plate, right? Oh, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> the bed rocks with a gentle swaying of the trees. Same thing as before. Can you guys see me over it? here? Keeping an eye out. Oh, they don't. Time to steal some stuff! Oh yeah! Gimme. Poems. An elementary gland fathom. Oh my lord! I mean... I'm not gonna read all of this, but... This could be useful. There's no replacement for actually learning Lanfaden by immersion, but to get you started, here are some important words that you and your soldiers should know. Because this could be cool. Anam, soul. Anam Fath, plural Anam Fada, the spiritual leaders of the tribes. Argues, armor. Arg Oes. Bunen, life. Behunen, ah. Blade, wolf. Blaith. Oh, it's called Blaith. Kas, battle. Delam, leaf. Den, men. So Delamgan. Hmm. Enfath, princess, Estramor. Foreigners, okay, makes sense. Fath, prince, Guan, winter, Enwen, woman. Le, place, palms, uh, nah, 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 nah. Scott, shield, when, maiden. Okay. I just like this because of the Delamgars or the Delamgans. Huh, interesting. Okay, we'll take that. And I'll see it done. Let's get this as well. It's finished. Awesome. Ooh, two diamonds, baby. Glenfaden Customs. Okay, just customs. Hey. And what okay. the flame reveal? A cool breeze whistles through the leaves. 
Okay. And that's all we had to check in this inn. Oh, 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 oh. Who are you? What if he finds me here? Oh, a frightened villager. I hadn't noticed that this was a frightened villager. This man looks up sharply as you approach, eyes going wild. You! You're the one! The one he's looking for! He sets down his wine. You killed Lord Raedric! What if I did? No, you, you don't understand! It didn't work! It... I'm one of the guards at the keep! Was! Was one of the guards! He's killed most of them! The ones you didn't! What? Kolsk! He didn't last very long! Nothing but empty hair him! Nice enough to work for, I mean, much nicer, but that didn't help him when Raedric came back. Gods, the screaming... Did I kill him? His eyes... It was like he was burning inside. He shudders. He says he's come back to lead us like before. Says he's going to kill you for what you've done. I told him I'd find you, give you his challenge. Do it all honorable, that sort of thing. He let me go. And I kept on running far as my coin let me. He laughs bleakly. Funny, me running into you anyhow. Uh... Okay, one thing that's very weird to me... Is the fact that... There are no options for me to say... Dude, he's dead. How is he back? But, I mean, I guess there's gods and magic and stuff, so it, it might not be that amazing. Um, I suppose you have some kind of trap waiting for me back there? Who? Me and the poor fools ready to threw, threw off the ramparts? I haven't got a thing to do with him, and begging your pardon, but I'd rather keep as far from you as I can manage. Just going to sit here and drink until I don't remember a thing. I wish you all the luck in the world, friend. There's something awful in that keep, howling after your blood. So, yeah. The Champion of Barath. Having slain Lord Raedric, I thought Gilded Vale freed from his influence, but it seems that something stirs in that great keep yet. This may be the work of a new usurper after the throne, or mere supersti superstition. Either way, it may be worth investigation. Investigation. While in the Celestial Sapling in Twin Helms, I encountered a former guard from Gilded Vale. He claims that Lord Raedric himself has returned to his keep, despite, despite his having died at my hand. Apparently, Raedric seeks vengeance upon me for having ended his life, and has issued a challenge. It may be worth investigating in any case. True enough. It will be something for us to do later on. What is this? Uh... Game. 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 Okay. Well, this is weird. I, I, I cannot click it. Oh, well. Oh. Oh, oh. I wanted to read the notification. God damn it. Can I still see it? No. Oh, come on. Ah, here we go. Barolt successfully arrived at Thane Bog with the help of Sagani. Barolt sends, sends his regards and promises to visit your keep again soon. Okay, so this was simply somebody that we... Mm, we sent an escort with. Okay, and now Good this day, guy... Stranger. Let me see what you have for sale. Renato looks away from you, scratching his neck and shifting his feet. I am destitute and have but few meager offerings left to sell. How dreadfully embarrassing. If I can recover my investment for Malari, I'll have funds to resupply my stores. Until then, you are welcome to take a look at what I still have in stock. Oh, he has just a, a bunch of herbs, I guess. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So nothing very special on him. Ooh, unlocking this will require the proper key. I could check on the map what this is, but I'm going to leave it as it is. To preserve the suspense. The stones have been worn smooth by centuries of wind and rain. Lockpicks. Oh, the, uh, okay. I was about to say they probably are gonna bar my passage. 
the guard places his spear between you and the path that leads beyond the gates. Still, Estramor, the rest of the city is forbidden except by order of one of the Anamfada. Trespassing in Twin Helms is punishable by death. <laughs> nice spear compensating for something. How do I get permission from one of the Anamfada? He grudgingly points to a long hut in the middle of the district. You can always find one of the Anamfada in the passage of the Six. Perhaps Anam Ananemfath Bethwell will listen, if she can tolerate your barbaric language. Mm-hmm. So, let's just make sure of something here. Uh, where is it? Oh, come on. Uh, give me a second. Ah. Yeah, so Anamfath are the spiritual leaders of the tribes. Okay. So we have to speak to their leaders in order to gain um, passage or be permitted into the other districts. Ooh, I shall be discreet. Male armor. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Wait, I, I cannot... Oh, come on. Well. A warrior. Can't do anything. Oh, 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 oh. I'll see what I can find. Okay. Warriors. And this is the entrance, right? Yeah, it is. Did I not pick this up? Oh, I did not. Okay. Okay, so on the left side we have... Unnamed NPC, so they don't matter. More stealing? Lay in love. Following your lead. Okay. Milk and oil. Hey. I shall take it. More unnamed people. The rains have run their course and trade has returned. Okay. Yes. Can I steal that? You won't see me come. Oh yes I can. Wonderful. Hey. More food. Fire cast light in dark Art Song Market. Okay, I think that's where we're gonna find the lady that swindled the other guy. Okay, I'm just kind of exploring the region. Wait, what? Oh! A tabby cap snaps out of its placid stupor as you approach. It opens its eyes wide, following your every step before trotting to your side to rub against your legs. We gained the orange tabby cat. Aww. Aww, he's fluffy. Wait, where is Piggy? Oh my god, he's so fat. Are you gonna be a fat cat as well? Like Garfield? Oh no, he's just a normal cat. <laughs> okay, he is kinda cute. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but, but Piggy MVP. Sorry. Piggy MVP. Come on, Piggy. Let's go. Yeah. Pumpkin the Quarg. I thought I saw a name over here. Oh, it was um, a gold-plated name. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, so more tribesmen. Nothing of interest. Another house. I want to steal Let's that. See what lies this way. Okay. Hey. Protector. The pedestal shadow creeps around the dice. Can I read this now? Oh, no. Simox Hearth will not have warmth for the foster child. Watch your words. Simox is an Anamfath. A spiritual guide of the tribe. Still your heart, sisters. Iradam's child is safe with him. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I cannot click it. Okay, so. We're gonna go in here. Which is the passage of the six, I believe, where people have been sending us. And see if we can meet these leaders of the tribes. 
the twice split arrows. Wait. Yes, I am sure the Anam father will not commune together for a season at least. Okay. This this must be the twin fangs. No, the three tusk Stelgar. There's only two. Why are there three tusk? <laughs> okay. I, I don't know what that is. The stone bramble. Uh, the wooden flamingo. Ah, the fisher crane. The stone bridge. The keepers of the stone. And the herbalists. The guided compass. Well, <laughs> I tried. Oh, I'm getting experience for just by exploring the areas. The dragon skull is brown with age and polished smooth. Okay. So, you know what? I think I'm going to end this episode here. Because I believe that this conversation can be a lengthy conversation, if I remember it right. And it also has a lot of lore. It's gonna, um, I believe, give us some quests and some important information. So it's actually a good place to start a new episode fresh. Um, so yeah, we've dipped our toes into Twin Helms, the Art Song District. We still have three more to see. Uh, we still have a section of Elmshore to discover. Let's not forget about that. We have some fights there. Um, and we've picked up some quests. So I hope you guys are having fun watching this playthrough of Pills of Eternity now in Twin Helms. Like I said before, we still have a lot of NPCs to meet, a lot of quests to get, a lot of areas to explore, and it's all gonna be awesome. <laughs> so, as always, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pillars of Eternity. I hope you guys are enjoying the journey. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you guys are enjoying the content, consider subscribing. There are videos coming out every single day, and it's also a free and easy way to support the channel. So, I hope I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.